going to start by reading some verses from Nehemiah chapter 5 and then we'll look at these verses uh, for a few minutes together. Nehemiah 5 beginning at verse 6. I was very angry when I heard their outcry and these words. I took counsel with myself and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, you are exacting interest each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them and said to them, We as far as we are able have bought back our Jewish brothers who have been sold to the nations. But you even sell your brothers that may be sold to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, The thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our God? to prevent the taunts of the nations, our enemies. Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine and oil that you've been exacting from them. Then they said, we will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them swear to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, so may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen. And praise the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Nehemiah in these verses is angry. He, he's very angry at the, at the plight and the, the poverty of uh, some of the people around him. Uh, perhaps you too at times have found yourself angry at the exploitation uh, of others. Perhaps scenes on the TV have made you angry. Perhaps uh, awareness of people being abused in one way or another has made you really angry. And and anger is an appropriate response. it's It's a good response, but it's not a sufficient response. Nehemiah is angry, but then he also engages his mind. He engages his powers of intellect. You and I too need to inform ourselves not just make an emotional response, but actually inform ourselves around the facts of poverty, the facts regarding neglect, and the issues of abuse in today's society. He gathers then the community together, including those who needed challenged about their own abuse and neglect of others and their indifference to those who were being abused and neglected. He makes everybody aware and he influences and mobilizes those around them in such a way that they see the plight of others and begin to respond to that plight. He reminds them, appealing to their conscience by reminding them of God's laws. He points out to them that these people who are being exploited are their brothers and their sisters. And so he pulls them towards a place of care and concern and love for those who are being exploited. He appeals, in other words, to their moral obligations. He reminds them as well that they have a responsibility towards God and towards their neighbor. And he also uses the scriptures themselves. He quotes the scriptures. God's word speaks loudest. It speaks louder than your thoughts or my thoughts or your words or my words. And then he takes a personal lead, putting his own money where his mouth is. He calls them uh, to get on and to do something and to act, and to act now, and to act quickly, and to act wholeheartedly. That's captured in verse 13. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, so may God shake out every man from his house and from his labors 
who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. The people then, and the church today needs to really get, get it, that it's not right that we neglect the poor, that we ignore the neglected. Alec Mateer used a phrase in his commentary on these verses that is really quite powerful and strong. He says, it's a blatant act of rebellion against God's person. A blatant act of rebellion against God's person when we neglect the poor or ignore the neglected. We don't, in our day, do we want to be a church or to be an individual who would be in rebellion against God, but rather a people whose hearts are softened by the Spirit of God, a people whose ears are open to the voice of God, and a people whose wills, our whole wills, obedient to the ways of God. Uh, I'm going to conclude today with a prayer from a very different source, a prayer that was written by one of the Puritans. Eternal God, we know that it is your power alone that can recall wandering children, that can impress upon them a sense of divine things and can render that sense lasting and effectual. From you proceeds all good purposes and desires. From you proceeds the diffusing of piety and happiness. You have knowledge of my soul's secret principles, and you're aware of my desire to spread the good news of the gospel. Make me someone who can give of thy bounties to the indignant, your comfort to the mentally ill, your restoration to the sin diseased, your hope to the despairing, your joy to the sorrowing, your love to the prodigals. Blow away the ashes of unbelief by your Holy Spirit's breath and give me light and fire and warmth of love. I need spiritual comforts that are gentle, peaceful, mild, refreshing that will melt me into conscious lowliness before you, that will make me feel and rest in you as my all. Fill the garden of my soul with the wind of love, that the sense of the Christian life may be wafted to others. Then come and gather fruits to thy glory. So shall I fulfill the great end of my being, to glorify you and to be a blessing to others. And so in this moment, I pray that you would just take a minute to ask the Holy Spirit to again fill your heart and life and mind and ways with a will and with a desire to serve others. Lord, will you help me? Will you so touch each one of our hearts and lives in these days? And so, Lord, pour your Holy Spirit into your church and out upon your church and fill your church with your life-giving Holy Spirit that we would truly care and reach towards the needs of others in obedience to your will and word and ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.